I, I really love books about just simple things and the human existence. And with Atonement is a good example that something small can happen and it can change the trajectory of someone's life. I was introduced to reading from a very, very young age. My, both my parents actually are really avid readers and reading was always really, really encouraged in our house. You know, a outing for me and my little sister was always to the bookstore over the toy store. And my mother would always kind of let us go rogue and pick almost as many books as we, within reason, as many books as we wanted. And one of the first books that I really remember reading and loving was um, Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events. I think when I was younger, I had such a vivid imagination and those books just really fed into that. It was my probably first introduction into kind of dark humor in literature. And I remember being very inspired by the world of Lemony Snicket, as sort of dark and twisted as those stories are. I'm definitely a before sleep reader, which is hard when you're reading a really good book and then it's really hard to fall asleep because you want to stay up and read all night. The last time I had that actually, I think it was my year of rest and relaxation. As I said, my, you know, my, my parents have always been really big readers. And so we're constantly sharing books. Actually the trauma cleaner, I think, either came from my mum or my dad a couple of years ago. My dad always gives me books for my birthday, which is a pretty dad gift. <laughs> So he'll pick, you know, three or four books and send them to my apartment in New York. And then my mom actually gave me Boy Swallows Universe for Christmas a couple of years ago. So we're constantly giving each other books. I definitely love stories written by women about complicated women or the complications of being a young woman or a girl. You know, as a teenager, even though we had very liberal use of the bookshelf and the books that we had at home, there were still books that I read maybe as rebellion, more so probably from school than from my parents at home. You know, the books that we read at school were Animal Farm and a lot of Jane Austen, which I've now read as an adult and have got a lot of love for those books. But when you're sort of told to read something and it's not on your own accord, there's a rebellion in reading books that aren't curriculum. So the books that I read in school that definitely shaped you know, that period between 14 and 17 and commentary on girlhood and being a young woman would be Lolita, Little Birds by Aeneas Nin and uh, The Virgin Suicides. I think as a young woman, especially in your teenage years, I don't think you have the vocabulary to articulate what being a young girl is about. Ironically, Virgin Suicides is written by a man, a professor actually, but I still felt like there was a language in there that my girlfriends and I could relate to, even if it was a more exaggerated version, obviously, of how it feels to be a young woman and an adolescent in a time where things are changing. And But I think it also just created this whimsical world that, you know, I think we, you know, fed into and were very inspired by. And then Lolita, I read when I was about 15 and have reread it about six years ago, and I definitely read it with a very different perspective. There was something quite provocative about reading it at 15 and again, as a rebellion against the kind of Jane Austens and the, and the books at curriculum that we had to read at school. So um, I read it again at 26 with a very different perspective and there was a less sort of romanticizing about this story, which I think as a young girl, you, you do a little bit at least. I did a little bit, you know, it was, as I said, very provocative. The book that I read, I think, when I was about 12 or 13 was Atonement. And that probably shaped the rest of my reading life, I would say. I loved telling stories as a kid, but I didn't really know how to. And Atonement obviously was not only such a vivid book about a time, but it was also about a young girl who was telling stories and writing scripts. And I would say both characters, Cecilia and Bryony in the book, kind of influenced me growing up. I moved to New York in 2019 and someone gifted me Just Kids. It was such a kind of beautiful introduction to this city that I was moving to and was so excited to be walking around these streets that Patti Smith was mentioning. 
What I Loved by Siri Hustvedt. In this book, you know, reading about these streets like Canal and Broome and all these streets that I see and walk through every day, there's just something really beautiful about putting yourself in the exact space and place that these writers are writing about. My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which is by a wonderful female author called Otessa Moshfeg. It's almost like the grown-up version, maybe, of virgin suicides, <laughs> a little bit. I love a book that is kind of just a comment on sort of the meandering existence of being a human, that nothing spectacular happens. I, I really love books about just simple things and the human existence. And with Atonement is a good example that something small can happen and it can change the trajectory of someone's life. And ultimately that's a lot, a lot of these books are about. The Trauma Cleaner is probably my favorite book that I've read recently. And I love it because it's a portrait of someone that is doing something extraordinary but it's still within a very simple world. And what she is doing, it's a spectacular thing, but small. So it's about a trans woman who um, grew up in a very oppressive time in Australia. And it weaves in the stories of the houses that she cleans. So she cleans houses after crime scenes, or she cleans houses for people that are hoarders. So the story, is both about this woman's life in Australia and growing up as a trans woman and weaves in these stories of the people whose houses she cleans. And to me, that book sort of sums up what I look for in a book, which is, you know, relatability and the simpleness and the spectacularness, if that's a word, of the human existence. So Three Women by Lisa Tadeo is a book that I read during COVID. And yes, it's a, a book about women and desire and not necessarily fitting in the box of sexuality. I really love reading stories by women that really understand the complexity and the messiness of women. I think that literature has definitely influenced my acting career. I have always said that I never as a young child set out to be an actress. I really just love storytelling, which is why Atonement was such a pivotal part of my, you know, realization that this is what I wanted to do. And I still, you know, I love the aspect of storytelling more than sometimes the acting itself. I love the preparation. I love being able to delve into books and escape. I also had the privilege of being in a book that is being developed for Netflix called Boy Swallows Universe. It was the first time that I've ever played a character that was from a book. And I'd already read the book um, a few years before I got the part. And it was just such a beautiful resource to have this wonderful book that I could read over and over and over again, as well as the script. And there was just so many pieces in it that I was able to put into the show that weren't necessarily in the script. So Boy Swallows Universe is by an Australian author called Trent Dalton. He decided to write this book about his childhood that was quite rough, faced a lot of adversity as a child, and he wanted to write a book that painted all of those hardships in a way that they were part of the journey, that they were part of what led to the next moment in his life, but it all leads to the moment in your life where you look back and you think, it all happened for a reason. You know, I think it's a um, universal story about overcoming adversity and love and family, being able to, you know, conquer some of the pain that we all inevitably go through in life. Um, and it's just a wonderful book. I do write. I used to write a lot more as a kid especially in high school. But in saying that, one of the parts about acting that I love the most is the preparation. For a character, I will usually answer questions about the character that I may have, and that usually in turn kind of turns into a version of a short story. So for example, in Boy Swallows Universe, there was a lot in this book 
that I was able to take to be able to build and shape this character. But there are also gaps in the timeline that I'm able to then go in and write my own, you know, story about what happened to her in those four years that maybe aren't necessarily detailed in the book. So usually for characters, I sit and just sort of let my imagination run wild and think of what their favorite food is, what kind of music that character listens to and write it out as if it's sort of a short story.